dealing with uh, uh, with dying, uh, that would be eliminated. Uh, there was $500 set aside to help out the needy in the community, particularly children when they need dental work and they have nowhere else to return. That's a fund that's been there for probably 25, 30 years. Uh, the library book budgeting, uh, book budget and other was cut this past year. Uh, another $3,000 from that. Uh, the council has uh, given $250 to the Preservation Society that they have used to to maintain town records, to, uh, uh, to, to keep the historic preservation uh, records program going. Uh, family Fund Day, uh, $8,000. That was the amount budgeted this year. Uh, there, was, there was a little bit of money as well that you know, was given for the parking fees, which was supposed to go towards next year's Family Fund Day. And you know, if this went through, my senses would try to offer that to a private group uh, to see if you know, they wanted to use that as a as seed money to get Family Fund Day going. Uh, the Fort Williams account was already reduced uh, I believe by more than half, this would cut it by more than half again. Uh, reduce tree maintenance by $1,000. Uh, you see a memo that you receive from the tree warden that says we already have lots of hazards and liabilities out there. You know, beyond this, you know, we need another twenty-five or so thousand uh, dollars. You know, these are just you know, my suggestions. You can see that uh, over the course of the last few weeks, and again today, I received another whole stack of suggestions based on, you know, the the plea to the department heads that we need more suggestions. Uh, but, you know, I think that, you know, reiterate, you know, even if you eliminate Shore Road, you know, next year's budget, you know, there's not going to be a Shore Road to eliminate again. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at, uh, you know, drastic, drastic changes in uh, funding. So I would, I would recommend that, you know, perhaps you, you might want to refer this to the Finance Committee. There was a workshop scheduled for uh, next Monday, anyway, the 18th, uh, that you know maybe you could begin to discuss it then, and then hold a public hearing at your December meeting uh, on the whole subject of uh, the budget and what needs to be done. Uh, chances are that by the December meeting, the legislature will have finished their action uh, on the uh, the state budget problem. Uh, at the one other comment I would like to make at the the hearing yesterday in Augusta. I think municipal officials very effectively made the point uh, that the municipal revenue sharing program comes from a result of a, a tax policy of the state, whereas 5.1 percent of income from sales, from the state sales and income tax goes back to municipalities based on a formula. The municipal revenue sharing fund is already suffering as a result of the state budget cuts. We receive an automatic reduction just as the state uh, funds go down. What the, uh, the administration has done is essentially say you have to do more than your fair share. And what they're essentially doing is saying that we want what, it, what are municipal funds by tax policy to, to bail out the state and its problem. And uh, you know, it's, it's really a shift from, uh, from municipalities uh, and from the state you know, back onto the property tax and, and onto municipal services. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I think we all recognize the state has problems and, you know, it's got to deal with its own budget deficit. You know, it's unfortunate that, uh, that the move in Augusta appears to be uh, to making municipalities uh, bear the great brunt of, of the state's budget problem. The town budget in Cape Elizabeth was reduced 8% last year. The state budget is still at the same level it was a year ago. And uh, you know, we're being asked, I think, you know, well beyond our cuts. And uh, you know, that's essentially you know, where it stands at this point. Uh, hopefully there'll be some better news, but it uh, doesn't look too good at this point. Well, thank you for the gloomy uh, story here, Mr. McGovern. Councilor Cogsell. I wish that the state legislature would really take a good look at themselves. They are far too big, far too expensive for a state of this size, and they really have to seriously address the problem of cutting the size of the legislature. And I know it means that more trees will have to be represented by some of the people there, but nevertheless, it's supposed to be one man, one vote, instead of taking all the money out of our pockets. 
and I think that's they've got to really instead of just cutting everywhere else also cut their own so well I certainly certainly would agree that we've seen that debated for many years now cutting down the Senate to 32 is it and uh, cutting the legislature to 99 representatives basically giving a one to three representation which is the standard it seems in most of the United States um, I certainly concur with your thoughts and hope that they look very much within at that issue that uh, never seems to get enough votes uh, each session Councilor Jordan in the, the speeches and the workshops you went to Michael is the indication of what they had in mind of cutting anywhere within the state it's all the communities that are looking to to pass on no, no. That's shot, Paul. No, out, out of the, the, the governor's recommendation is just short, I believe, 125 million. I think it's 122 million. Uh, roughly 47% of that is coming from educational funding and municipal revenue sharing. The educational side is taking a 4% cut, municipal revenue sharing is taking a 100% cut uh, under, under the proposal. Beyond that, uh, you know, there, the main health care finance agency would be eliminated. Uh, the main commission on women, the main commission on aging, uh, the DEP would have staff positions eliminated, the growth management program of the state uh, <coughs> would be eliminated, the University of Maine is being asked for about 7% seven. Uh, 7 cut, uh, the, technical the technical college system for a similar cut, the Department of Education uh, itself is, is being asked to sustain a cut, human services is recommended for a slight increase. Uh, because of general assistance matching funds. Uh, it's been, I don't want to repeat the governor's speech, but he's looking for a $6 million savings from privatizing certain services. Uh, one, one more. In these items that you read off here, now you say you're going to have a discussion later on as a kind of a workshop, and the 18th, is that the idea? Because I can see some things here that I feel that we could do away with and we could cut back on and it was all right to have when the times were great and the money was flowing up the hill and down and uh, people wanted everything and I think that they're beginning to realize that we got to cut back. I think uh, the state got a message on the bond issues, the way the votes went there and I took and cut the one on the paper and compared it to the votes in Cape Elizabeth. Cape Elizabeth voted a little bit different than the rest of the state and the rest of the communities around the greater Poland area, if you take and compare them. And uh, so I guess we still hold our wealthy town image out of a, the rest of the state of Maine by the way that some of the votes went. You get that from people outside because of the way they, they voted. But I would like to take this sometime in our budget and throw in my two cents of where I think some money could be saved. I ain't going to say I'm going to come up with a million dollars for you, but I think I could come with a few dollars. Some people are going to have to uh, look at things a little different. I still think you've got to get into your private contracting and some of the things within the town and I think money would be saved there and I would hope that we can get started on it early enough so when budget time rolls around we're not boxed into a time schedule yeah to, to answer your question that, that you addressed at the beginning what I would hope at the workshop is that you would go through this list and say no way we're going to accept this cut and you would look at all the other material look at your own budgets and say we want this substituted instead uh, what I would hope to do, uh, I don't know, this schedule's awful tight, is to, to get you a, a list of not only these things, but to try to bridge the rest of the gap uh, between now and the end of the week so that, uh, you, you know, you can see some additional cuts for, to be considered. My number one issue from the public, and I've got to throw it out because I'm haunted with it practically every day, is right out back the town hall and 1226 Shore Road. And I don't know how the rest of you councils, whether you get any comment or not on it, but I certainly get a lot of them. How can the town afford it? And to explain that it's in the works and what have you before the real 
roof fell in, as you might say. Uh, they seem to be satisfied in a sense, but they think it is pretty plush type construction that's been going on here. Any other uh, particular input at this time? It looks like the uh, proposed motion could be then that we would refer uh, this item of the fiscal year 1992 uh, budget dilemma to our workshop that we are uh, holding with the town auditors uh, next Monday, I believe, the 18th of November. So moved. I have a motion and so we moved. have a second. Any discussion? I was also trying to encourage you to hold a public hearing to get public input as well at some point. Mm -hmm. Maybe at your December meeting since, you know, this, you know, if everything happens that may happen, you know, we need to know pretty quick, you know, just, you know, the same issue with the state so that we can begin to implement cuts. Do we need to uh, tie in the uh, motion for a public hearing in December on this issue with the uh, referral to the workshop? If, if you, I just want to add that to my motion because I think that is a great thing to do because there was a lot of people last year was very pleased with the way the manager presented that budget. If we do this, this is what happens and so on down the line and they went home with a good message of uh, what will happen with an increase or decrease and so on and so forth. So I just want to tie that into motion whether we got too much on our agenda for the December meeting, or we got to have a special one on it? Well, okay. we rather separate it because it be, could be quite, it won't be a likely deal. I don't think there's that much on the December agenda other than shoreland zoning. That's the biggie. Well, I, it's, I'm content to uh, combine those two issues, and uh, you know, pending the workshop, we will also have a public hearing at the December 9th uh, town council meeting if your second is uh, acceptable. <coughs> Okay. That is the motion. Is that clear to the town clerk? Yes. Okay. Is there further discussion on that? All those in favor? Okay. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you very much. I, I would only just comment, uh, Councilor Jordan, on the on the uh, the Shore Road property. Uh, personally, again, when when individuals talk to me about that and and suggest that it is. Uh, not in keeping with the circumstances, I, I feel very strongly that that is part of the, intra, the infrastructure of the town, the infrastructure, and um, we, we have to continually invest in that uh, infrastructure, otherwise uh, down the road we, we really make no investment for the future. That's how I handle <coughs> the issue when I'm asked about it. But your numbers and my number don't add up when I talk to a resident here recently that mm -hmm. talked to you. Mm -hmm. I gave him bigger and different figures. Perhaps. Well, maybe we never need to <laughs> we need to talk together about our numbers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if, if I may, on that, uh, you know, we will be closing out that project uh, over the next couple of weeks. It is almost done. It, 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 it is plush. It is very nice. I think it will be a tremendous asset for the community for many years. and. Uh, I uh, will have a full report for the council on exactly what everything cost, and uh, I, uh, you know, I think anyone on Monday morning after the football game would say that, uh, you know, if we knew what we know now, it wouldn't have been done the way it was done. But, but uh, you know, unfortunately, we're not in the position to uh, to know that we'd be in as bad shape as we are at this point. But uh, that's what I've tried to explain to them all. If we knew then what we know now, you wouldn't have seen it. You might have seen the building, but you wouldn't have seen all the renovations and what is being done. And if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. I don't think anybody's disagreed with me on that. Although I disagree with some of your trees out here, and I think you've created a problem for the future in snow removal, which is going to cost you more bucks, and evidently planners and what have you don't think of the cost of the future. But that's my conservative type thinking. Thank you. Item number 97 this evening is to consider the status of the Shore Road Shoulder Improvement Project and take any necessary action. The town manager has really got a lot of work tonight with us. Uh, I'm going to defer again to Mr. McGovern. Yeah, we received a report recently on the Shore Road Shoulder Improvement Program from uh, the 
account from the engineer that we had working on this project, the consulting engineer. Uh, his estimated cost was 303852 While that did include, you know, some areas that probably would not be done, uh, my sense is, you know, if you, if you tried to phase this over periods and, you know, didn't have the, the cost results, the, the cost benefits of doing the whole thing at once, what you're probably looking at is, is at nonetheless, even if, even if you didn't do it everywhere, is a cost of about 300000 uh, You know, the, the last issue that was discussed, uh, both last issues, the budget in general and 1226 Shore Road, uh, you know, my sense is uh, this was a great, you know, project to be considered. Uh, and, but, you know, I just don't see the dollars. Uh, and, uh, you know, I would re recommend uh, that you either abandon the project this evening or uh, schedule it along uh, with your public hearing on the 9th for consideration on the 9th of December, whichever you'd prefer. Councillor McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move that we postpone action on this item until the December 9th council meeting. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there further discussion tonight? All those in favor? Well, 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 wait a minute. No, you know, you're operating too fast. Okay, there's further discussion. <laughs> okay, Councilor thank Gordon. you. I appreciate you backing back us a little bit. That really makes me feel good. Uh, by postponing it to the December meeting, is that uh, when the manager presents the outline of the budget in the f future. Now, wouldn't it be a better way, in my opinion, to say you're going to put it on hold and then bring it up at a later time? No. But you, you feel you ought to, well, you're saying you ought to throw it out to the public. This is what you think. No, what, I've chosen the word abandon very carefully. If you put it on hold, you can't recapture those funds. Under the charter, the only way you can capture funds from a project is to abandon it. That is the term that is used in the charter. Uh, you, you can't. That seems in the reverse of the way yeah. my mind goes. If I abandon it, I abandon it for good. But that, if I put it on hold, I can grab it again because I've just got it sitting back there. But that's a, so that's in reverse of the charter. I guess I better understand the charter. But anyway. Yeah. I had just one problem with this project, and I think it should be, I don't like to use the word abandoned, but because uh, I think it could come back at a later date, and maybe it would. But the project started out at a very small, inexpensive type project in the 100,000 neighborhood, not a very extensive type deal. But as I read that report, geez, we was, we was going to, first started, we was going to avoid stone walls and such things like that. Now, Christ, I guess we was going to move them. No, there's, there's no... And I guess I didn't understand what I was reading then. No, no there's... And blowing corners and what have you. It really got into an expensive project, so I'm going to vote for the motion. Okay. I, I won't get late. I won't go into it, and we can discuss it later. But, uh, we, but I don't want to have the public, anyone who's watching out there, you know, we had no intention of moving stone walls. We had, there was no intention to remove trees over three inches in diameter, I think. And yeah. the only blasting of ledge that, that was planned were, was around some of those real bad turns, essentially more to improve sight distance and not only to widen the shoulder. Uh, well, I haven't got anything well, we do have a motion and we have a second. I've been accused at uh, cutting off the discussion too early. Let me give plenty of time for further discussion on this uh, particular motion. I didn't accuse you of doing it. I just said, why don't you slow up for a slow thinker, that's all. You better repeat that motion. I don't know where you are right now. Would, would the town clerk uh, repeat the motion we have on the table, please? <coughs> the, mo the motion is to postpone this item to the December 9th town council meeting. Can I ask why to the person that started that kind of thing? Why would we postpone it until then? What more are we going to know then? I think this is to be discussed in conjunction with the immediately preceding item about the budget. Yeah. I Which think the issue is, is uh, Irving, at the, at the December 9th meeting, we're going to be, <clears throat> in a sense, uh, looking for $200,000 somewhere as a consequence of the shortfall. 
whether the shore road improvement project will make up uh, 75,000 of that larger number is still debatable and uh, we may be able to put our heads together between now and then and find the $75,000 elsewhere. So the thought is that perhaps tonight it would be premature to abandon that project and then recapture the funds that we've already allocated. Does that help? There is a motion. There is a second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, the vote does carry six to one. Item number 98 this evening is to consider accepting a tree grant in the amount of $4,600 and take any necessary action. Um, I'll defer again to the town manager with only one question, and that is if we accept it, uh, are we really going to get it? <laughs> well, you, you, I, I can think I was asking. Yeah, you do. Yeah, it is acceptance. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's been awarded. It hasn't been encumbered. That's the step that I'm concerned about. Encumbered. Yeah, you know, hopefully we'll get this thing in there and signed and get it encumbered. You know, and the other thing I would like to mention is, uh, you know, we could use as matching funds for this uh, some of the funds that was left to us by an estate. So, you know, even this would not preclude when you look at the whole budget next month of looking at trees and, you know, you could you could use the the Gladys Brown funds, some monies that were left by Gladys Brown to match this. Uh, it will demand matching funds, however. Yes, it does. To accept it, yeah. And the other thing I would like to say is uh, the tree warden uh, really showed a lot of initiative to get this grant and. Originally, it was only allowed to be given to Tree City USA, the designation that Cape Elizabeth does not have. And uh, he uh, advocated very strongly with the Department of Conservation that uh, we shouldn't be subject to a grant simply because we, we don't want to pay dues to a private organization, uh, the Tree City USA organization. And he convinced them of that point, and that helped really helped to enable us to uh, obtain uh, this offer of a grant. Councilor McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Question to Mr. McGovern. Can you just give us a brief outline of what the town's proposal is to do with this grant money? The, the specifics of it are still being worked out okay. uh, by the tree warden. It's first Which is another way of saying no, I really can't. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> May we assume that it's to purchase and install trees? Yes, it is. The, yeah, the tree wasn't offered to come this evening, but I assumed we'd get to it this late, and uh, I suggested to him that uh, as much as I appreciated his offer to come, I really didn't think it was necessary at this point, but I will ask him to provide a report to the council exactly on uh, what it will go to. Okay. Councilor Jordan. So uh, I, as I understand it then, it's strictly to purchase trees. It's not to maintain or clear or trim or anything like that. It's for tree planting. Tree planting, that's the way I read. And also the Gladys Brown Fund is the same. That's also for tree planting. Tree correct? planting, okay. Yeah, her, her, uh, when Mrs. Brown passed away, she, her, her uh, will said it was for the planting of trees throughout the town. I would entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the tree grant in the amount of $4,600 from the State Department of Conservation. Second. There's a motion and a second is the further discussion. And thank the tree warden for working on this project to get us other grant. I think that ought to be in the motion. If she agrees, but if she don't agree, it don't have to be. Will the second agree to that uh, addendum? Second will. We have a motion on the table and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 7 0 is the vote. Thank you very much. The final item on tonight's agenda is item number 99. This is to consider a proposed amendment to the rules of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council and take appropriate action. I will defer at this time to my colleague, Councillor McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In experiencing a number of recent roll call votes, I felt that the chairman 
acting in that capacity should also be taking responsibility to be the final member to vote in that kind of situation. In some instances, potentially having to break a tie vote. Therefore, my recommendation is that we amend Section 17 of the rules of the Cape Elizabeth Town, Section 14, excuse me, of the rules of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council to add the sentence, when a roll call vote is taken, the roll is called in alphabetical order, except that the chairman shall be the final member to vote. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, discussion on this particular change in the, um, in section 14 of our rules of the town council. Councillor Amaral. Yeah, I'm uh, just curious as to why I know you said because of the possibility of breaking the tie vote. Uh, in the legislature, the uh, standing committees, when they have a roll call vote, the chairs always are called upon first. And I, I don't know if the strategy there is that that might affect the votes of some of the other members or not. But, uh, I find I that we know. aren't inclined necessarily to vote along the political lines that you find in the legislature and just because your name may, your last name may begin with a letter near the end of the alphabet. I don't think that responsibility, potential responsibility of breaking a tie vote goes along with the spelling of your last name. Oh, I see. Well, certainly this is a nonpartisan uh, group here. Um, Councillor McLaughlin, your suggested change, um, how does this fit with Robert's rules? I'll defer to the clerk. <laughs> We looked this up. We did look this up, and the only thing that Robert's rules, rules alludes to is that when the chairman votes only in the case to break a tie, the chairman shall vote less. Yet the chairman perhaps wouldn't know it's going to be a tie if he or she already voted. There are some cases where chairman doesn't vote normally, I only see. in the only case when it's a tie vote. I understand your point. Well, it's not what I would want us to see us no, do. No, <laughs> I think we're all elected at large, and uh, I wouldn't want to see that change in uh, the, the stature of the chairmanship of the council uh, move in a direction like that. This doesn't imply that you would not vote. Not at all. Just that there is a roll call vote you vote last. Or yes. She votes last, or whoever's chairperson. Right. <laughs> And the discretion as to calling for a roll call vote would still rest in the chairperson's position. I believe any member can call for a roll call vote. Okay. I think you're right. Is that yeah. correct, uh, Mr. Manager? I should ask the town clerk. That's right. That's my understanding. That anyone can call for a roll call vote uh, on any uh, vote. Good. Further discussion on this particular uh, change? Uh, Council Thompson. I was just wanted to ask the manager if it is customary. I mean, are we allowed to change council rules mid midway, or is that only done at the beginning of the of no. the of the? You can amend the rules any time that you choose to. However, it has to be presented in writing at the previous meeting to right. when you vote on it. Right. Okay. It's just usually we make our changes at the beginning of a new year. I believe we found precedent for changes being made other than the beginning of a council year. There are a number on the book. Okay. The last one was, I think, no, the Pledge of Allegiance was at the regular time, but yeah. there, wa there was there a, so when you move citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda to the beginning of the meeting as well as the end of the meeting, that was done midway through the I have no problem with it. I just didn't vote last as first. Any other discussion? I don't think I've asked for a motion yet, have I? No. no. Uh, I would ask for a motion at this time. Let me ask a question. We have to vote on this next month. Right. This would be to place the item on next month's, next agenda. month's agenda. 
Mr. Chairman, I move that we place item, the contents of item 99 on the December 9th Town Council agenda. Second a motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I will ask for a show of hands, all those in favor. <laughs> We have a seven to zero uh, affirmative vote to place this issue on next month's uh, agenda for our council meeting on December 9th. At this time, I would ask any citizens, I've already been accused in the paper of doing this uh, since there are no citizens here other than the cameramen. Uh, uh, camera camera operators. Camera. Operators. I'm sorry, yes. I, didn't, I didn't see beyond the camera there. The camera persons. Uh, does anyone wish to come down and discuss items that are not on the agenda? Seeing none, I would uh, Move ask again. for a movement second. for adjournment. Yes, uh, we have the motion and a second. All those in favor? And unanimous 7-0. Thank you very much, and I will adjourn the meeting this evening. Good night. Thank you very much. Don't eat too much turkey.